Hey YouTube, my name is Steph and today we're going to be doing a costume breakdown of Aragorn's costume from Lord of the Rings. Uh, this is the first costume that I've ever done um, and the reason for it is uh, because I had uh, his sword from when I was a little bit younger. I started collecting a lot of medieval stuff and his sword, Aragorn's sword, was one of my favorites. So um, it kind of inspired off of that and ever since seeing the movies I really wanted to make the full costume from head to toe and today I'm going to be doing like a full costume breakdown some things I've made some things I found some things I've kind of uh, just kind of used whatever I had and some things that I just bought uh, out or at an earlier stage and then I modified and I'll go through all the pieces I'll put the links to this in the description below on where I got the items or some things I'll just say hey just use you know any black pants or whatever the case may be um, but this picture that's up here is really the inspiration I love the one from the two towers and uh, I, I, I use that as my color palette I loved what what he looked like the the deep red with the browns and the darker browns and those tones is really what I re reached out for from a from a film's perspective I know in the first one he wore a lot more greens um, but I really didn't care uh, the most important thing about a costume is your interpretation of the costume and that you get a color palette that works with everything uh, so I use that picture as my inspiration so let's start from head to toe I'm gonna go right through the entire costume I have some more pieces that I couldn't kind of put on here so we'll go and, and do a full break breakdown We'll start from the outside of the jacket. This jacket uh, I got from, um, I think it's Party Stuff, where it was originally a coat for a duster coat for a cowboy, and I decided to I decided to totally change this up. I removed some of the pockets. It had uh, a patch on the sleeve that I took off, and Aragorn has a pretty distinct. Uh, not only collar but he has these kind of patches on his arms and so what I did was I just sewed on a piece of fabric and then I put, poked holes through it and kind of weave this leathery type cord through his his sleeves to make it look like it's it's kind of hand stitched and hand attached so this one I took from party stuff because I had this coat I decided oh, I'll just take it modify it and make it Aragorn's coat it was pretty close it's pretty kind of um, ratty and I'm okay with that it looks very very ratty tatty uh, something none of the edges are really finished it's very un unfinished and I also added a seam kind of along the side um, for this costume as well just because it was close to his costume moving on to the inside um, to this kind of inner vest portion um, I just literally went to to fabric land picked out some fabrics that were pretty close to the same color this has this kind of um, suede type feel to it. it really doesn't matter what it is I made a really rough sew along the edges I'm terrible at sewing so my wife is amazing at it but I decided to tackle this uh, my own because I really want it to look rough um, and then in between here there's kind of some of these details and I'll take a picture of this chest portion here but um, I just kind of created some four um, I just kind of hot glued or sewed on these these brown pieces of you know kind of um, they're kind of braided and I just made these kind of half-assed knots on there and I glued it on and it made it look pretty close to what I wanted to create with this um, with this vest it has to be just just rough I mean it goes to certain lengths and those those certain details I really want to get out of there but honestly it's it's made to be rough the most important thing was was my color palette to go from this kind of duster brown to this deep dark brown and then on the inside all I did was I picked up fabric and again I just made this really rough kind of shirt it's not even finished the the edges aren't even sewn it's just kind of ratty tatty and I made this v-neck line out of it and honestly just mimic any shirt that you have you can take any red shirt the most important thing again for me was the color um, and then what I did was I made holes after I sewed this kind of v-neck v line um, what I did is I poked holes through all of it and I just kind of swirled basically a rope a leather rope through the entire edge because uh, 
because he has this type feature around his his neck and on the V V neck line here. So I went all the way around and then just kind of added a uh, a leather string or a leather rope to that. So these three piece or these two pieces on the inside I made myself. Honestly, it's it's pretty easy to do because um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, it just has to be functional. Okay, and the vest there's no arms to the vest. I do have some arms to the uh, to the uh, to the sleeves here, um, but the vest is just kind of just sewn together, kind of half-assed. And so this is kind of the middle portion. This is kind of the statement. As long as these colors work, I was happy. I also picked up the this is what kind of gives it away that it is Aragorn. Um, he's got that the star that that is kind of girlfriend elf girl. I, I can't remember for the life of me her name. Um, gave gave to him, and I picked this up from AliExpress, I think, for two bucks, two or three bucks, and it's a statement piece. He needs to have it in order to be Aragorn. So these are the the kind of the base portion. Now we'll move on to the pants. Pants, you can literally do anything. Any black pants that you have. I grabbed my Lululemon pants. Um, it's just kind of a stretchier black fabric. Um, any pants will work because you basically from where the where this um, tunic ends or where the vest ends and where the boots begin, uh, you, there's a very small amount of fabric that you see. So any black pants will do. Let's move on to the boots. The boots uh, I made myself, and what I did was I took uh, an old pair of boots. Here, I'll grab them. I took an old pair of boots, and um, these were kind of like my motorcycle boots. They're super, super light, and it has a kind of a high heel uh, to it. Uh, the, zippers, the zipper on the inside was broken, so I decided, hey, I'm going to make some boots out of it. If you take some a look at, at some of the pictures that he has of these boots there's kind of a piece that runs all the way along the front a sewed piece here and then there's a couple different splits and stuff like that but it's sewn very kind of rough everything's rough so what i did was i took the boot and i started laying out fabric and i started gluing the edges after i sewed these pieces together i just kind of mapped it out took some lines and just kind of ran across the fabric in different directions until they fit and then I sewed those pieces together, and then when I, I laid it on top of my functional boots so I can wear it outside, and then I just glued the edge all the way on here. And then, as you can see, on the inside he has um, kind of these ropes that crisscross on the inside, and then it kind of goes high right short of his knee or above his knee. Uh, so I just kind of created this band of fabric to tidy everything up at the top. Once this was done and functional, I could slip my foot in, in and out um, as I please. What I de then did is I grabbed some black paracord and I just, he has three wraps that happen. One near the bottom, one near the middle, one near the top, it's just knotted together. And it just makes it look like Aragorn's boot. Um, so I just grabbed some paracord and I keep these aside because these are only for these boots. Just keep these aside all knotted up. But I have three per boot. And uh, this will look sweet. Yeah, I like that it's a rounded toe. And it's not like a pointy toe like a girl's boot. Uh, these work out fantastic. After I wore these, I was like, yeah, man, these actually look pretty, pretty good. Next, we're getting to the fun part. The fun part. Okay. Before we get to the fun part, these are, um, I think he has one leather glove that he has. Um, I picked these up from the thrift store, and all I did was I picked up a leather, pair of leather gloves for a couple bucks. I cut the fingers off, took the liner out, just kind of half-assed all the liners out. So from like either an MCC or a thrift store or Valley Village or wherever, uh, just the cheapest gloves you can find pick something that fits pretty close. Um, uh, I'm actually doing a costume for uh, Captain America right now, so I'm, I can actually use these for him as well. So <clears throat> very, very versatile. Um, yeah, leather gloves. That's how. That's what I did. Okay, 
The second last piece is his sword. Now this is what inspired the entire entire costume. When I was younger, I loved watching Lord of the Rings. I watched so much Lord of the Rings and behind the scenes. Um, and I decided that I was going to buy Aragorn's sword. Back then, um, there was a company called Arms of Valor, a Canadian company. I'm Canadian. And um, they made these battle-ready swords. Now, you can get Aragorn's sword kind of anywhere. You can get the stainless steel stuff. I really wanted the high carbon spring steel uh, actually able to fight with it. Uh, blunt edge, but um, here I'll show you what it looks like. Now, <clears throat> this is kind of the real deal to me. Um, it's pretty awesome. This is what kind of inspired this whole thing to happen. Uh, I love they make a fantastic sword. Uh, it just looks so legit. This thing is so badass and heavy. It is so heavy, but it is a high carbon spring steel. I can actually take this and beat beat steel with it, and I have in the past. Uh, it's kind of shaken a little bit over time, but honestly, it's only used as a uh, kind of a as a piece that I would use only as a display piece for now, but it is a high carbon spring steel. So you can't get it from Arms of Valor anymore because they do not uh, exist anymore. <laughs> but you can get your own version of Aragorn's sword. And this is literally the piece that makes it all happen, or one of them. I'll get to the other part in just a second. And then it came with a sheath. Um, it came with a sheath. And what I did was I took some spare parts of leather that I had and it came with this, um, I, I don't know what the name is exactly. I thought back in the day you used to call this a frog. And I don't know why they should call it. I, I believe that's what it's called where it, it hangs at two different points and it holds your sword onto your belt. So, um, but yeah, I literally took this and I just made it kind of half-assed according to um, what the movie was here. Um, just kind of made it as close as I can. It's underneath my clothes and underneath the side. So I really didn't care too much about detail. I mean, I picked up my old dad's old uh, belt from back in the day and it's definitely close enough to make and sell this as being Aragorn's um, belt and sheath and all that good jazz. But this sword is super heavy. I remember going to a party. I kept knocking people just because this thing was so heavy and stick out like a sore thumb and it's massive and it's Anyway, so this is kind of like my pride and joy. This is what makes Aragorn's uh, costume fit at the end of the day. Okay, so now we're going to get to the last part. The last part are the bracers. Now, party stuff, thrift store, made it myself, um, got the sword from, I don't know, some sort of vendor, um, wherever you can find it. Uh, but this is literally, this is my pride and joy. I made these. Um, this is kind of the second piece. After I got the sword and I had the sword, I really want to make, I want to make his bracers. So I actually took some, not some classes, but I went to a leather store and I picked out all my own leather and my own colors and I watched and researched on how to do this. Now this looks a lot more red on the screen there. But this is a deep dark brown um, and I have a more orangey red that's in here. Uh, kind of just went according to the colors that he had. And um, this is a lot more in depth. Now you can make this as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. Um, but I had the opportunity. I said, you know what, let's just go big or go home. I designed it all in Illustrator. If somebody would want the files that I use to create these, so there's the the lines that go across and the shape of these bracers. And then this fits like a glove perfectly into, into this portion. And it has, you know, all the leaf pattern and everything's done by hand. Um, and I, I was able to laser etch the, the tree of Gondor on there. And, you know, I was able to use my dad's leather sore and, and kind of get these, these edges in here. Um, if somebody would want these patterns, 
uh, just just say it in the in in the comments below and I'll see if I can get those I might just do it for a small price just because it took me so long to put these things together I'd probably be around five bucks or something like that for the patterns but I laser etched these I cut them up and then what I did was I I hand I just took uh, some leather from Tandy leather or where I go is Warkhoff Shafir, which is local in Winnipeg here, and uh, any vegetable tan leather, and I soaked it, and I hand, I just kind of, I did it all by hand. I was really proud of it. Um, these, if you will buy these, are several hundred of dollars. Um, if you buy these, kind of made by hand, and uh, I, I took three different types of leather because I knew there was three different layers. And uh, I, 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 I put these all together. It's got the clips in the back. It's got the weave with the ropes in the back. And to me, this is what kind of ties it all together. I know it said it was the sword. I know it said it was the necklace. But the bracers with, with, with this um, kind of ties the whole thing together. So I'm really excited about this costume. I made it a couple years ago. And um, I, I just wanted to give you a, a rough breakdown. So, so the, the whole point of this is that you can literally take items and make costumes. A lot of people will, will just, what they'll do is they'll just copycat. They'll just take a straight up copycat or just buy and dish out all the cash to, to get the legit costume made. But I highly suggest that you take a look at reference pictures of any costume that you like any costume that you like and just break it down into tiny small pieces and tackle it bit by bit the more patience that you have i find the more reward that you're going to have out of your costume i didn't want to just buy this costume for seven eight nine ten a thousand dollars whatever hundreds of dollars to get it all done for me i really like to develop costumes from the ground up and i hope that today you kind of learned um, that it's very doable. It's very possible. I have a couple more costumes that are lined up that I want to break down for you. One being Captain America, one being a Star Wars costume, and one being a, uh, a costume from uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And I'll be doing more costumes and hopefully that this helped you out. And if you want to do the exact, like l let's say an Aragorn costume like this, just comment to me and ask me if you want any more questions about what I did um, to make it happen and I'll see if I can help you out. Other than that, thanks for uh, joining me on this costume breakdown. We'll see you next time.